Hello, welcome to Ms. Clark Reads to You. Today I am reading the second half of the audiovisual in Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album. <clears throat> when I am done, I'm going to take you through making a book, a brain, or a heart connection. So if I make a book connection, what I'm doing is I'm finding something in the book that um, speaks to me in a way that it could be vocabulary, it could be a simile, or it could be a detail that supports the main idea. If I'm going to make a brain connection, it's like that little light bulb goes on above my head. I have an aha moment. Oh, this challenged me. Or, oh, this really surprised me. If I make a heart connection, I'm finding something in the text that is moving me into becoming a better person. So I'm going to make a brain, a book connection by the end of my reading today. And I'm specifically looking for a detail that supports the main idea that Maury had established um, back in earlier, one of the earlier chapters that dying is not useful. I'm useless, I'm sorry, useless. Useless meaning not able to be used. So Maury wants to be useful. He wants to be the bridge between life and death so he can help people to understand death. Soon the cameras were rolling in front of the living room fireplace with Koppel in his crisp blue suit and Maury in his shaggy gray sweater. He had refused fancy clothes or makeup for this interview. He had ref uh, refused fa fancy clothes or makeup for this interview. His philosophy was that death should not be embarrassing. He was not about to powder its nose. Because Maury sat in the wheelchair, the camera never caught his withered legs. And because he was still able to move his hands, Maury always spoke with both hands waving. He showed great passion when explaining how you face the end of life. Ted, he said, when all this started, I asked myself, am I going to withdraw from the world like most people do, or am I going to live? I decided I'm going to live, or at least try to live the way I want, with dignity, with courage, with humor, with composure. There are some mornings when I cry, cry, and mourn for myself. Some mornings I'm so angry and bitter, but it doesn't last too long. Then I get up and say, go and live. So far, I've been able to do it. Will I be able to continue? I don't know, but I'm betting on myself that I will. Koppel seemed extremely taken with Maury. He asked about the humility that death induced. Well, Fred, Maury said accidentally, and then he quickly corrected himself. I mean, Ted. Now that's inducing humility, Koppel laughing, said Koppel laughing. The two men spoke about the afterlife. They spoke about Maury's increasing dependency on other people. He already needed help eating and sitting and moving from place to place. What Koppel asked, did Maury dread the most about his slow, insidious decay. Maury paused. He asked if he could say this certain thing on television, and Koppel said, go ahead. Maury looked straight into the eyes of the most famous interviewer in America. Well, Ted, one day someone's gonna have to wipe my ass. The program aired on a Friday night. It began with Ted Koppel from behind the desk in Washington, his voice booming with authority. Who is Maury Schwartz, he said. And why by the end of the night are so many of you going to care about him? A thousand miles away in my house on the hill, I was casually flipping channels. I heard these words from the TV set. Who is Maury Sch Schwartz? And went numb. So I think my detail that supports that dying is not useless is the whole risk that Maury takes. He's got this shaggy old sweater on. He doesn't feel well. 
to get dressed up for the camera. His legs are withered. He is in a wheelchair. He is telling the thing he's afraid of to hundreds and thousands of people on national TV. He definitely wants to communicate a message. If I made a heart connection here, it would look like this. I'm not so sure I would be brave enough to look my worst because I didn't feel well on national television. It's different to run out of the house, look bad because you're having a bad day. But Maury is withering. The ALS is a lit candle climbing up his body, withering him, himself. He, he can't even get from one, from the chair, to his bed. Now, what surprised me or challenged me? This whole idea of who is Ted Koppel? So in my last video, I made a reference to Ted Koppel being like the, um, uh, I just lost his name, the Family Feud host, Steve Harvey, today. Now, Koppel does not have humor the way Steve Harvey does, but the celebrity value, that's what we're talking about here. That imagine for a moment that you were going to be talking about something in your life and then somebody got wind of it and told a national program Steve Harvey's interview program about it. And Steve Harvey pulled up in his limo to the front of your house with his camera crew to interview about this, you about this particular topic in your life that you're going to be sharing as an experience. This is a very big deal. So I'm gonna stop there. And when we come back, we will be reading the orientation. I'll have a couple notes on the board. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in a little bit. Thanks for joining me.